This video contains content that some might find disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. This episode of Are You Scared is brought to you by Smile. Once you see it, it's too late. Only in theaters September 30th. A smile can be contagious. A sudden jolt of happiness transferring from one human to another. But sometimes smiles can take on new meaning in the right context like perhaps when a smile is inappropriate. Tonight, we'll explore when a smile can turn sinister. I'm Ryan Bergara, and this is Are You Scared? A show where I tell my friend Shane Madej the internet's scariest stories. So lock your doors, turn off those lights, and let's see if we can make it till the end of the night. The Smiles. Growing up, whenever I felt sad, lonely, scared, there was one thing that always could pick me up, my mother's smile. That's what made this whole thing so unbearable. In the end, her smile wasn't a source of comfort. It was the source of nightmares. I don't really want to talk about what happened to my mom. She's gone, and what exactly happened in her final moments is beside the point. Or maybe it's the whole point. I'm not sure anymore of anything. Why, well, mom's gone. Why is mom gone? Well, she's dead. Or her lovely smile? We just don't know how she died. I saw my mom the day before she died. She'd been acting strange, according to her neighbors, the Halversons. A few days before my visit, Max Halverson had called me saying he'd heard a woman screaming from my mom's house. I called her, but she didn't know what the neighbors were talking about. My mom sounded fine, maybe even in a better mood than usual. I could hear her smile through the phone. She said everything was fine, and I believed her. Still, it had been a month since I'd visited, and this was as good as an excuse as any to go check in. You can hear a smile through the phone, right? Not really. Wait, listen. Yeah, well, when you move your tongue around like that. I wasn't moving my tongue. Like a salamander. Yeah. That's probably one of the grossest things that's ever happened on the show, second to the smile dog incident. You know, apparently if you smile without your eyes, like a... I don't like that one bit. And then you just let your mouth go, that's how like your model look. A full smile, and smile like a normal person. <laughs> He's oh, not wait, taking... I'm not smiling? Like this. Yeah. That's your model. Apparently. <laughs> that's your model. Apparently. <laughs> I pulled up outside her house the morning before she died. Everything looked fine from the outside. I turned off the ignition, but before I could even unbuckle my seatbelt, there was a fierce, desperate pounding on my car window. Max and Deb Halverson were suddenly standing there, clutching one another, looking concerned. What are you doing in my driveway? Get the I'm, fuck out of here. I'm trying to see my mom, you fucking weirdos. I don't like these Halversons one bit. Are they the enemies of this story? They should be, because they're nosy. Yeah. And I don't, I don't like nosy neighbors. No. Like Miss Kravitz from Bewitched. Top five nosiest neighbors of all time. Kravitz, <laughs> the dude from uh, Home Improvement. Ned Flanders. Squidward. Oh, yeah. Agatha from uh, WandaVision. WandaVision. I think that's a good nasty, top five. Nasty, nasty, Neighbors. Can you trust them? Who knows? You sure can watch them die. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Anyway, go ahead. Their eyes were underscored with heavy, dark circles, and their hair was greasy and unkempt, like they hadn't showered in a few days. I've known them since my mom moved next door, almost 20 years. But the way they desperately clawed me into a hug when I got out of the car was unlike anything they'd done before. It wasn't excitement. It was fear. Yeah, I don't really like that. I'm not a, I'm not a big hugger, especially without my consent. And they're, and they're greasy. Especially if they smell, too. Yeah. Have you ever had a stinky neighbor or a stinky, uh, perhaps, seatmate in an office or something like that? Um, I mean, I, I don't want to tell tales out of school, but one of the Watcher founders claims he doesn't have to wear deodorant. I was thinking of the exact same person. Yeah. You know the funny thing about people who say they don't need deodorant? They sure do. They do. <laughs> but that's neither here yeah, nor it's there. It's neither here nor it's there. It's over there. Yeah. It is behind the camera. 
The Halversons wanted to talk to me before I went in to see my mom. I already knew about the scream, but they said that was now the least of their concerns. Since that night, the two of them had been taking turns watching my mom's place from their window 24 hours a day. Now imagine these two like gripping each other, pulling you into a hug after you get out of your car, and then to calm you down being like, We've been watching your mom in shifts 24 hours a day. See that little station we got over there with the binoculars on a tripod and the little bucket for our poops? <laughs> Don't worry, we got it under control. <laughs> we binge watched Rear Window in Disturbia <laughs> and we thought we'd do it on your mom. They told me that the last two nights, around midnight, my mom had started leaving her house, walking to the middle of the street and staring off down the road as if she was waiting for something. The first night when she was out in the road, I put on my boots to go see what she was doing, Max explained in a hushed tone, glancing over his shoulder at my mom's house, as if he was worried she might appear behind him any second. I started walking out to her, calling her name, but she wasn't responding, as though she couldn't hear me. That's when I slowed down. At that, Max just started shaking his head. Deb put her hand on his shoulder and took over. He got to the mailbox, then stopped. See, your mom, she was smiling, right, Max? Max just nodded. He'd always been such a solid, unwavering presence in my life. My dad ran out of my mom and I when I was seven, but for the first time ever, I saw real fear in his expression. Sound actually sounds like a pretty stand-up guy. Maybe we were quick to judge. I think so. That's totally I mean, out of character. I mean, he still sounds us. like a bit of a perv and a creep, but. I don't, well, why that part? <clears throat> He's spying on an old lady. I mean, she could get hit by a car if she keeps doing that at night. Yeah, though she sounds like she's almost turning into like a werewolf, so maybe she's got good reflexes. Max cleared his throat hard and picked the story back up. That smile, I've never seen anything like it. It turned and ran inside. Max shook his head and stopped, so Deb picked up. All he could talk about was that smile. He kept saying it wasn't human, like it was feral. He said she almost looked like a hyena standing over a kill. I looked back out the window, but she was gone. We wanted to call you. Max took back over. I wasn't even sure I saw what I saw until last night when she was back out there. We were about to call you when, well, here you are. I thanked the Halversons for their concern about my mom and told them I'd see what was going on. They seemed relieved, gave me another hug, and set off back to their house. Now this is uh, pretty intriguing because a smile is a lovely thing. It is until it's inappropriate. Like if I punched you really hard right now and you <laughs> smiled and it, it had like, no expression. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's crazy shit. When my mom opened the door, she looked tired but glad. I'd seen her tired plenty of times before, but this was a deeper exhaustion than I'd ever seen on her. We went inside and I mentioned what the Halversons had said. I asked if she'd been leaving the house late at night. A glimmer of confusion bordering on anger crossed her eyes, but she blinked it away. She'd been waking up in the middle of the night and having a hard time getting back to sleep. So she was taking some walks around the block. Nothing like what Max had described. She didn't know why he'd say something like that. She wondered if they'd been seeing things. Before I left, she was sitting in her kitchen and the way the light was trickling through the window was perfect. The big elm behind her house filtered the sunlight into individual beams that would pour into the kitchen in the afternoons. There's a big mirror next to the table that would spread that light to every corner of the room. It was our favorite part of the house. I pulled out my phone and took a couple pictures of her sitting there. As I looked at the photos, her eyes seemed worried, yet resigned. But her smile was the same. That soul-affirming smile that always made the bad things go away. My mom always worried about me driving in the dark, so I left before the sun set. As I walked back to my car, I shot a glance over my shoulder back at the Halverson's house. In an upstairs window, Max stared down at me. It looked like he wanted to say something to me like he wanted to ask me not to leave. What if he was like, your mommy's weird. <laughs> I'm just freaked out that I'm leaving the house. Like, all right, bye mom. Open the door and then you just see the neighbor. I know we're flip flopping on whether or not we like these neighbors, but you know. They, well, she seems fine. Um, yeah, maybe they're bullshitting, you know. Yeah, maybe, old people like going on walks. Maybe they're telling stories. It actually makes me realize how easy it would be to just tell your neighbor some crazy shit and have them like worry about it for a while. 
I mean, clearly we don't have any friends in our neighborhoods. No, we, we should can, just start doing that. We got bridges to burn. Yeah. I broke Max's stare and looked back to my mom, waving from the porch. She'd been her normal reserved self all afternoon, maybe even more so. I got the feeling she had bad news to share, but didn't want to sour my visit with it. I wish she had. Had I known this would be the last time I saw my mom alive, I would have marched right back up to the house and refused to leave. But I didn't. That's not something you could immediately explain away. Like, smiles are just scary when they're persistent. Like a painted on smile. Yeah. It would be also very frustrating if I told you like, oh, Shane, I can't stop smiling. And then you're like, I know this is pretty good, right? And I was like, no, seriously, I can't stop smiling. Instead, I looked back at the Helverson house. The window where I had just seen Max was empty. My mom died the next day. The scene was horrible, blood everywhere, and a huge, horrible smile frozen on her face. Max was the one who actually saw what happened. He was quiet and worried that day before she died, but afterwards, it was hard to get anything out of him, like he wanted to forget what he saw. I'm not gonna lie, I'd be a little bit more suspicious of Max. Yeah, he saw everything. Why did he, I guess because he was watching and he didn't call for help while this was all happening? Like. How do you explain that to the police? I I've saw, oh, I saw it all. How? Because <laughs> I watched. <laughs> how, how long were you watching? The whole time. <laughs> it was pretty messed up. And I've been doing this for seven days. <laughs> At my mom's funeral, I tried to talk to him, hoping to understand what he'd witnessed. It sounded so unlike my mom, but Max was in a bad spot. The suit he was wearing hung from his body like he hadn't eaten since the day my mom had died, and he was visibly trembling the whole time. Finally, at a small reception at my mom's house, I managed to pull Max into the kitchen for a cup of tea and a talk. I closed the door to give us some privacy. As he sat down at the table, his back to me, I looked at his reflection in that big mirror that catches the elm-filtered light. It wasn't the haggard, worn face he'd had all day. It was a huge, menacing smirk. Like Max knew something that I didn't. Something unforgivable. Oh no, Max! He got the smiles. He got the smile. He's smiley now. I also love the trope of just staring out into like a, I guess he's not staring out a window, but he's staring into a mirror. Yeah. It's a good shot. I'm gonna start do you, do doing that. Do you smile when you look in the mirror? No. Uh, cause Never? I, Cause I don't like what I see. Jesus. <laughs> I don't. Um, <laughs> But I am gonna start doing this in public bathrooms. I'm just gonna stand there <laughs> and smile into the mirror until eventually someone enters, sees the smile through the mirror, or someone's at the urinal. Yeah. They turn around, catch a glimpse of the smile. <laughs> it's pretty good, right? You know what you should do at the urinal when you're at the urinal? You should just stay there, and then just when someone comes up next to you to pee, you just... <laughs> I came around the table, his smile was gone. Tears were pouring down his face and out his nose. He was sobbing. He picked up the mug of tea I'd set in front of him and crash, his hand was shaking so much he dropped it. I quickly went for paper towels and stole another glance into the mirror. There was that smile again, reflected back. The smile, it was Max talking. He must have seen me notice it. Max, I prodded him to go on. I see the smile everywhere, since your mom. Max was crying in large, heaving gasps now, holding his head in his hands. I need help, Max whispered. I can't get the smiles to stop. They're getting worse. Soon it's going to be. Max trailed off, staring straight at me, with eyes locked on my own. His desperate, pleading face began to change. I'd only seen Max smiling in the mirror, but now a smirk started to creep across his face staring straight into my eyes. Max, I questioned. Max, what happened to my mom? I didn't realize it, but I was screaming, desperate for Max to answer me, desperate for him to stop smiling. Max didn't answer. He stood up and still smiling, walked out the side door. Honestly, you know, let Max live. Unnerving for someone to just stand up, smile, walk up. You gotta, <laughs> you gotta, you know. You gotta find happiness where you can in this in this life. You know, here in 2022, oh. it's a stressful time. If uh, the only smiles you can get are ones through uh, tears and snot at a, a memorial service for a woman who got Dr. Manhattan, um, <laughs> then, then hey, yeah, you gotta take what you can get.
That's true. Savor all the smiles you can have. Maybe that's the point of this story. It's like I a, think it's so. like a metaphor. Yeah. Probably not. A sweet story. I jogged after him, calling his name, but it was as if he didn't hear me. He just kept walking away from me until he got to the road. There, at the edge of the street, he turned slowly to face me. His unhinged grin stretched his face almost beyond recognition. Then, without looking, he took one big step backwards, straight into the path of a passing truck. Max never stood a chance, dead on impact. In my head, his smile seemed to hover in the space where he used to be. What do you think about a guy who's smiling as he kisses a truck that's moving towards him? I think it's no good. What if he was like, oh, I'm out of my, I'm being put out of my misery. Then you could spin it where it's like, the truck, like if there's just some sort of succubus force that's making him smile and he's like in pain, the truck hits him and kills the demon at the same time. I'm trying to spin this into a positive, but I'm realizing now the metaphor it's of this. It's tough to do that when it's just a guy stepping in front of a truck. What, yeah. are, what are the upsides of that? I mean, maybe an insurance claim for the truck driver in which he could get a new coat of paint. Maybe he was thinking about repainting the truck before yeah. that. Yeah, and well, now it's painted he, now. <laughs> Max's death, my mom's death, they were violent and horrible. The deaths of rabid animals, not people I loved. My grief was all consuming. The only thing that helped me get my bearings at all was looking at that photo I'd taken of my mother the day before she died. That comforting smile, staring back at me, telling me everything would be okay. Still, I couldn't move forward with my life until I had some answers. In going through my mom's things, I found her appointment book. She had a weekly appointment with a Dr. Ileana Katz, who a quick search revealed was a local psychiatrist. I was relieved. Here was a professional I could now ask about my mom, seeing if there was something I'd missed in my interpretation of her attitude. Max had mentioned her smiling. Then, he had been smiling himself. Maybe Ileana could help me understand what was going on. If this was some sort of disease, I needed to learn more especially since the barista at the coffee shop I go to had started giving me an especially wide smile. I could see a version of this story where the first day you don't realize this is an awful thing. You just think you're like really killing it that day because yeah. everyone's smiling at you. Yeah. I guess if you were like an egomaniac, you probably wouldn't notice until, well, the end maybe. <laughs> I wouldn't mind smiling all the time. No, people smiling at you. Wouldn't mind that either. Babies get that. I called Dr. Katz a few days after my mom's funeral but no one picked up. I left a voicemail, and when I didn't hear back for two days, I tried calling again. This time, the number had been disconnected. I went online, but Dr. Katz's website, too, had been taken offline. Running out of options, I drove to her office. Because that smile Max described seeing, the same one he wore, I was starting to see it everywhere. Strangers walking by on the street, smiling. The guy at the drive-thru, smiling. Even other people waiting in traffic every now and again as I caught their eyes stuck crawling along on the highway, they'd turn straight to me, smiling from ear to ear. Possessed. A selfish smile that meant no goodwill towards anyone. Well, I mean, I think if there's like a, like a cute barista smiling at you and you, you're a single guy, that seems like something that's really nice. Like, oh, maybe, maybe I'll ask her out or something like that. Yeah, thank you for the coffee. Let's go on a date like that's, that. That's how you do it? I see your smile. Thank you. <laughs> Would you like to go out for coffee? <laughs> the first thing I noticed outside Kat's psychotherapy was the door was propped open by a moving box. Stepping over it revealed an office that looked almost abandoned, like someone had grabbed whatever they could carry in a couple trips and said, forget it, to the rest. I walked slowly into the small lobby and picked a business card from the ground with Dr. Katz's name and now disconnected number. Suddenly, I felt a dull thud on my skull as a woman's scream echoed off the ceiling. I spun around to find a woman holding a book, thick, but not thick enough to knock me out. Get out, get out now, this is no longer an open business. Dr. Katz, I asked as I felt my head where she hit me. I said get out. Dr. Katz, I'm here to ask about my mother. She was a patient of yours before she... I couldn't finish before Ileana dropped the book and collapsed in a heap on the ground, sobbing. I knelt down and put my hand on her shoulder. I'd become numb to others comforting me in the days half since my mom had died, and this change of perspective was almost welcome. After a minute, Dr. Katz regained her breath between sobs. Still clutching her face, she shook her head and muttered into her hands. I tried. There's no helping them. Excuse me, I replied. There's no helping them, she repeated. Once they see the smile, 
it only gets worse. Panic started to rise in my throat. Tell me about the smiles. Ileana just took her head in her hands. Dr. Katz, please, what is it about the smiles? Still, only a sobbing silence. Finally, I couldn't take it anymore. Dr. Katz, I'm seeing smiles everywhere. You're saying what only gets worse. With this, she slowly looked up at me. Tears were still streaking down her cheeks and her look, it was not a smile, it was anything but. A look of pure, uncut terror. You're seeing them? It looked like it took all of Ileana's strength to say it, though it was barely a whisper. You're seeing the smiles? I nodded. Suddenly, Ileana sprang to her feet. Go, now, I can't help you. No one can help you. I'm sorry, but go. Slow down, I said, help me to understand. Ileana started to laugh. Help you understand? Help me to understand. Help anyone understand. All I know, all any of us who have tried to help the smiling ones know. She swallowed hard, but stared straight into my eyes. Is that once you see the smiles, you're the next to die. What would I start doing if I saw all the smiles? I'd start frowning. Oh, so I... if I see someone smiling, I'm just... Yeah, but eventually he's gonna start smiling, right? But what if I frown so hard that they start frowning and then I'm curing it? I think you seeing the smiles though is in your mind and then eventually the smile will creep over your face. Well, you know, there's a process of elimination. What if, what if I'm cracking it now? Yeah, I would try and test them and see if I could, you know, I mean, this is a little crude, but it's the first thing that came to mind. If I saw someone smiling for no reason and I had, I wanted to get rid of it, I'd do a little. <laughs> <laughs> if everyone's smiling, you gotta do what you gotta do. I gasped, the next two to die? With that, Dr. Katz began to laugh. Cackle, really. I grabbed her by the shoulders, screamed in her face, but nothing would stop her laughter. Her mind was gone. She needed help. But if what she was saying was true, I needed help worse. I scrambled out of the office and back to my car. I drove for miles before finally pulling into a gas station, hoping to collect myself. I closed my eyes and took a deep breath, then opened them and glanced in the mirror. For a second, the reflection appeared to show my mouth in a wide, toothy grin. I blinked, shook my head, and the grin was gone. What stared back at me was not a smile, but a look of pure horror. Just then, another car pulled up to me. In the back seat, a young girl was playing on a tablet. Slowly, she turned to me with a smile, revealing several missing teeth. <laughs> Gotta I'm, cut I'm got, off the Mountain Dew one. That exactly. One. I, I tell you, anytime you see uh, a toddler on an iPad and they break that gaze to look at you, that's scary. It's very it's concerning. A lot of YouTube geared at toddlers now. Yeah. They're just locked and loaded right here. Honestly, if I were a kid and I had an iPad, I would never learn anything. Fuck. I'd be six years old watching Live Leak. My brain would be ruined. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like, Mom, this person, did you see this? Yeah. <laughs> Uncensored. <laughs> I turned the other way, where a man putting premium into his car was staring at me, smiling. Each smile was worse than the last, and the smiles were everywhere. It felt like I was losing my mind. I was panicking, barely able to hold a thought in my head. In those moments when I'm most scared, I come back to that one thing, my mom's smile. I pulled out my phone and looked at the picture I'd taken of my mom the day before she died. When I took the photo, she was sporting her gentle, soothing smile. Now, when I looked at the picture, it was still there. Thank God. The mom I wish was still here to tell me everything was okay, to make me feel better with her smile. Then, I saw it. In the photo. Not on my mom's face directly, but in the kitchen mirror. The one next to the table that had always caught the tendrils of sunlight and scattered them around the kitchen. It was my mom's face, in profile, except it didn't match the woman sitting in the middle of the photo. It was smiling maniacally, painfully, like my mom could hardly bear being alive for even another moment. If I looked in the mirror and I saw someone who wasn't me, I'd be concerned. Or just you, but slightly different. Maybe like a, a, a thicker beard. Yeah, or like a big tattoo on my face what of if a spider. A, that looks good, maybe I should get that. Yeah, this guy's onto something. <laughs> yeah. My reality was melting around me. I frantically twisted in my seat to look at anyone else at the gas station. Everyone was looking at me. Everyone was smiling that same sickening smile. I looked at myself in the rear view mirror. Normal, no smile. But Dr. Katz hadn't seen a smile either. I stole another look at the girl in the next car. Her grin hadn't faded. 
It was as if it had been waiting for me. I looked back into the rear view mirror and aimed my phone camera at it. In the photo, my face in the mirror was grinning back, wide and agonizing. I stumbled out of my car and staggered into the gas station. Help me. I tried to keep my voice steady, but I could hear it waver, as if I were saying it through a clenched smile. The station manager immediately backpedaled, his back against the cigarettes. Clearly, he was frightened of me. I was frightened too, of what was happening to me. The manager grabbed a bat and held it menacingly. Get out of here, man. I don't want you having an episode in my store. Please, I need help. All I see are smiles. Do I look like I'm smiling? Leave now. While his eyes stayed threatening, as he spoke, his face transformed into a huge, sinister smile. They're everywhere, my voice sank as I realized. Everyone was smiling. There was no escape. I'm a very optimistic person, so I'd, I'd probably just be like, no, oh, this is sweet of everyone. I can live like this. Yeah, but it's like, it's, it's, it becomes eerie because it's not earned, you know? It seems like they're all behaving normally. So unless they were like, ooh, hoo, 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 ha, 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 you know? Yeah, like a monkey or something? Yeah. <clears throat> oh, that's actually a good test. Go to the zoo. See if the monkeys smile See if at the you. monkeys smile. Now, if the monkeys smile, then I'm sticking around. Go to the post office, they don't smile there to see That's them true. smile, that'd be pretty. DMV, go there, they're smiling now. They're like, hi, welcome to the DMV. I'd be yeah. like, what a life. Let's turn this negative into a positive. Yeah. The way I see it, I'm in a game of chicken with some sort of parasite here, right? And I wanna see if I could outlast the parasite. Yeah. So, if I act like I'm loving it forever, Yeah. I can't imagine, cause like, that's the rules, right? It needs to go from me and then jump to the next person. So if it's stuck with me. It dies with you. For a long time, exactly. So if I fall on the sword, yeah, I'm kind of a hero here. And if I could have a little fun with it, like going to the zoo or, uh, you know. It's the only thing you could do to put an end to this horrific situation. It's just kind of make the most of it. Be a hero. Make the most of it, exactly. Be a hero and be an optimist. You know, and that's what I think the story's about, is the metaphor. Just make, I think so. You know? I went back to my car and pulled out of the gas station, trying my best not to look at anyone as I passed. When I got to my apartment, I triple locked the door and closed all the curtains. I pulled down every mirror in my apartment and put them face down. Now, this is where I sit. I keep refreshing the forums online, begging for help. At night, I can see my reflection on my computer screen. And there it is, the smile, plastered across my face. Cruel and painful, like it can hardly bear being alive for even one moment longer. So. Are you scared? That's what I'd do, I guess. Just yeah. lock yourself. I mean, it's not too different than how you live your life now. That's very true. Obviously, you have Sarah with you, but you know, all the other stuff, you know, and the little OB. triple locked door, closed curtains, <clears throat> mirrors yeah. down in every part of your apartment. Yeah. It's basically, they hang sheets over them. Yeah. It's all you can do, I get to be socially responsible, I suppose, lock yourself up. But uh, you know, I think either of us would be out there in the streets being like, Hi. <laughs> Anybody want some pink berry? You know? yeah, exactly. Might as well have some fun with it. You gotta. If you're gonna try and carry this thing into the ground with you, you yeah. gotta have some fun with it. So yeah. while I, I, I get this is the narrator's way of handling the situation, obviously we would do it very differently. As long as you can't pass it willy nilly and, mm -hmm. and it has to, you have to die, then yeah, get out there, <laughs> shoulder the burden of, of uh, this smile and live with it and uh, that's your, that's your fight to fight. This is one funny little curse this person's dealing with. Doesn't seem fun. And if you want to see more of these smiling folk, perhaps you may want to check out Smile in theater September 30th. I'll be there. Will you? Go to the theater, I'll be there. Will you be smiling? Maybe. Thank you again to Smile for sponsoring this episode. See it in theater September 30th.